Hello and welcome to Your Daily Five. My name is Erin Swenling with DecisionPoint.com and I'm bringing you the five charts that I think you should see before the rest of the week finishes. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. Again, my name is Erin Swenling and DecisionPoint.com does have a free live trading room on Mondays. I'm getting ready to go right on into it from noon to 1 Eastern time. If you're interested in coming and visiting us in that trading room, just go to DecisionPoint.com and you will see the area to sign up for our free newsletter and you will get on the list for those links. All right, let's go for it five month candlestick chart of the spy. So of course, this is the one I look at first thing in the morning, just to give myself an idea of what is going on in the market currently. And as you can see, currently we are in the midst of a very, very nice rally. It's been moving now since mid October, a little bit after and before that. And so we have been watching, of course, all of our indicators to see whether this is going to continue or not. Carl wrote an excellent article in the Decision Point blog on the melt up possibilities of the market right now. And that is exactly what we're seeing here. Uh, right now, the market is down slightly, but as you can see, we have already made a higher high, another all time high and a higher low. So despite this already being a little bit of a, a negative day, we're still not seeing really much in deterioration just yet. Total volume on Friday was really high. And actually you can see on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, it was very, very high. That to us is a climactic kind of activity, a climax day, but I'll talk to you a little bit more about that on my next chart. So we can see that the RSI is still positive and not overbought. And we do see that PMO is still rising. It is starting to, to decelerate and we can see this sort of topping formation on the VIX. Now I do invert my VIX because I like to see overbought on the top and oversold on the bottom. So we can see it kind of rounding off right now. That's telling us that investors, despite the market moving up, are getting a little bit more nervous. But at the same time, a reading of 17 isn't all that high. Let's look at that climax analysis chart. Now, one of the things that is uh, that we do at Decision Point that uh, nobody else does that we really know, at least in the way that we do, is we look for climax days. And these are days when we get uh, really high up down volume ratios or down up volume ratios on the NYSE and on the S&P. And so we look at those volume ratios and when we see this uh, tilt very far to one side or the other as far as volume goes, then we know that something is going on under the surface. And so we then looked we then look at net advanced declines, net advanced decline volume. Of course, we take a peek at that VIX. And then again, we also are looking at total volume. So you can see that on Wednesday, we actually did get a climax day. And we actually were looking at that climax day as a downside initiation climax. That means that it was just the beginning of selling is what we were looking for. Made total sense. It was not one, a head scratcher. We knew exactly what it was gonna be there when we got those readings. And then what happened? We didn't see further downside action at all. That turned out to be just a huge big move. It got everybody comfortable. The breath was let out and, Whew, okay, let's get back to it. And so exactly what happened the next day is we got another climax and this one was to the upside. And since it came off of a decline, it was an upside initiation climax, meaning that we are looking for higher prices over the next day or two when we get that climax. And, you know, sure enough, we had these, uh, the volume ratio on the S&P was above our threshold of three. You can see that that total volume number was very high. And so on Friday, we had a nice update to follow through on that climax day. And it also followed with lots of volume. So the question was, 
we had this initiation to the downside that didn't work. And now we have this uh, initiation to the upside. And so far, it looks like it is working. And my thought had been the fact that we had that downside initiation and did not get followed through. And in fact, got an upside initiation climax the very next day that tells me that there is some serious internal strength within this market with a very bullish bias which brings me to my bias assessment chart we have something that is unique also to decisionpoint.com and that is the golden and silver cross indexes these uh, were something that Carl came up with and I helped a little bit with, but he really came up with the idea. You know, we always look at percent of stocks above their 20 and 50 day EMAs as well as above their 200, but we don't really, you know, that's the best we had as far as breadth. So Carl came up with the idea of a silver and golden cross index. The golden cross index, meaning how many of the stocks within that index, or in some cases a sector, because we do have these for all of the sectors. You look at a golden cross, which most of us are familiar with, a 50 and 200 day EMA positive crossover. And so you take a look and find out how many of the stocks within that index or sector actually have a golden cross. Who has a configuration in the long term that is bullish and has a bullish bias? And that is what we looked at here. Right now, we have a nice healthy number of 82.6% of the S&P with a 50-day EMA above the 200. Now, obviously, it has been trending lower, but it was very overbought. And so we are at a, a reading now that is still somewhat overbought, but mainly very bullish. And it has managed to sort of... Um, you know, stall out a little bit. So we're not really seeing the same sort of decline going on right now. Uh, the Silver Cross, how many stocks have a 20 day EMA above the 50? So if a 50, 200 day EMA crossover is a golden cross, we decided to make a 20, 50 day EMA a Silver Cross. All righty. So um, at this point, what we're looking at is about 61% of stocks within the S&P 500 that have their 20 above their 50. That is positive. It is rising. This is a number that can support uh, a foundation, has a foundation for what we are looking at now, which is rising prices. You can see that in terms of participation, though, that the, persist the participation numbers are uh, very close to the Silver Cross. I don't like to see that. I actually want participation to be much higher than the Silver Cross because this Silver Cross index cannot improve unless the stock is above its 50 and its 20 day EMA. That's just how it works. So we only have 63% with their price above their 20 and 50. So that tells me the best the Silver Cross can do right now is 63%. So we really need to see this participation start to firm up under the surface because it is concerning when you see participation lagging while price is moving higher, that's certainly a negative divergence. But in the terms of this melt up, as uh, Carl talks about, in his article, this sort of uh, kind of follows that mindset. We have this overbought reading on participation. We've been able to decompress here. And now we have a strong enough foundation to continue higher and no longer overbought and can reverse itself. So we're going to be watching for reversal on participation. I think that's going to be a really important clue as to whether we're going to see this melt up continue. Last Friday, my sector to watch for our DP subscribers was healthcare. Lots of, uh, a lot of the sectors are really losing um, their momentum and the strength under the surface, but healthcare has started to really perk up. Um, it discretionary obviously looks really good, but I, I made healthcare my sector to watch mainly because uh, XLY, it's doing great consumer discretionary, but it is uh, in a move that is getting really mature and it's hitting overhead resistance. Although I have to say this morning, I saw the chart and it's still looking very, very good. 
but healthcare, I think, is your uh, sector to watch moving into this week. You have some really great participation numbers. And remember, I was talking about wanting to have price above the 20 and 50 so that you can keep your silver cross rising. That's exactly what is going on right now. 54, 55%, that tells us that this silver cross can get much higher. Notice also the golden cross has turned up and is rising with a reading of 76%, which is definitely bullish uh, and not overbought. And you can see relative strength against the S&P was already starting to improve. PMO is positive, moving higher. RSI is positive and not overbought. And you can see today, we're already getting a little bit of follow through. Yes, it's down a bit, but we already are getting some follow through on that breakout above this area of overhead resistance. Really nice bottoming basing formation here. Notice also that on Friday, the 20 day EMA did cross above the 50. It had a silver cross. And so that gave us an intermediate term trend model buy signal for XLV. So I'm liking XLV moving into the week. If you recall the last time I was on your daily five, I pointed out real estate as being a sector to watch and it certainly did follow through. So I'm looking for some great follow through on healthcare. So of course I have to bring you a diamond of the week uh, with uh, healthcare in mind. And I did my scan first thing this morning. So these, this is a very fresh chart. And I picked Select Medical Holdings, SEM, as my diamond of the week to bring you. This chart uh, percolated to the top. And I have to say, it looks really exciting. Uh, I don't usually get that excited about some charts, but I do really like this chart. I might be um, considering it for my portfolio moving forward. Uh, so we can see RSI has just moved positive. This is a mid cap stock. You have a double bottom that is forming. It's not confirmed until we get the breakout above that neckline. And it sure is lined up to do so. This looks almost textbook as a double bottom. If we do get confirmation and it breaks out above this confirmation line or resistance line right now, and it'll have to break above that 50-day EMA. So if we get a breakout above both of those, that tells me that there is a lot of internal strength. And the expectation of this pattern would actually take you right about to this area of resistance at about $37. Now, I always like to put a stop on my charts for you. And there you go. There's a stop just about 6% that you can lay out there and hopefully protect yourself. But look at this, we have a PMO that's about ready to give us a buy signal. Stochastics look fantastic as they are thrusting higher and now above that 50. That's all I have for you today, but I would welcome you to come check me out at decisionpoint.com. I have the DP alert where we look at the entire market, silver and golden cross. And then I have decision point diamonds where I bring you those diamonds in the rough stocks like I just showed you before that are lined up and ready to do something great. You can also try us out for a week using coupon code DP trial. And that's all I have for you. And I'd like to thank you for watching again, Aaron Swenlin from decisionpoint.com. Happy trading and good luck moving into this week. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.